How many college guys does it take to screw in a light bulb? The answer is three. One to hold the light bulb and two to turn the ladder. Now, where does that joke even come from and what am I talking about? As I read off of the St. Louis Post Dispatch on March 22nd, is that you can actually trace the origins of the iconic screw in light bulb joke as early as the 1960s. Now, what are we doing here? I'm told my intro needs a wow factor, and I have it. Right here. Wow. Wow. So, how does that even work, and what's going on there? My name is Derek Matheny, and I'm going to show you guys what is con how a light bulb is comprised and just how to screw it in and make it work for your own convenience. But before we jump in, I'm just gonna show you what's in a light bulb and how it works and how to properly set it in place and make sure that it works. Now, how do I even know about light bulbs? Well, I've changed many a light bulb in my life. I'm also an avid car guy and I've replaced so many headlights, I've lost count. Fun fact, if any of you guys own a Chevy HHR and a headlight goes out, get rid of it. It's too hard. You have to drop the whole front bumper. So, to start off, we have our glass bulb. Now, it's shaped almost like a plant bulb and that serves a couple different functions. First, it actually helps with the structure. Similar to an egg, that's actually one of the most rigid structures that it could actually be. And it also helps with the lights, the ray of light dispersion from the light bulb. It helps with the, it helps to maximize the, the, the area that the light is actually covering. Moving on to the invisible gas inside of the bulb, which is actually made of nitrogen and argon, it has a couple different purposes as well. The first of which is that it actually serves as a support to the actual bulb itself. The second of which is that it helps to maintain the uh, structural integrity of the filament. Now, speaking of the filament, it is coil shaped in nature and actually made of tungsten. The reason it's coil shaped is that it requires so much tungsten that they had to put it in that corkscrew shape to actually fit it in the bulb. A fun fact about the tungsten is that it is brittle in its raw form, but actually quite strong in its pure heated up form, which, fun fact, when it's at its max temperature is actually 2,550 degrees Celsius, also known as 4,500 degrees in Fahrenheit. I believe quite hot enough to cook an egg. So moving on to the support wire underneath the filament holding it up is that these are just made of metal and run parallel to the center pipe there. How this functions is that it actually helps the electricity move from the cap at the bottom up to the filament and back down to the cap. Similar to how arteries are in a heart and how they pump blood in and pump blood out in order for our body to actually perfuse the blood correctly and for us to live. So as we move to the last and final point I wanna talk about is the cap. The cap serves two major functions. The first of which is that it has these nice little grooves in there which actually holds it into the light socket itself the second of which is that it's made of metal and actually completes the electrical connection that is that we are actually being capable of from these support wires. Now, one final point that some people don't know is that when you're actually screwing in a light bulb, when reference to the glass bulb, is that you actually don't want to touch it with your bare hands. I learned this back in high school when I was working on a theater production and I absolutely ruined one of our $5,000 stage lights that we had just gotten my senior year. Big yikes. So, moving into the actual demonstration, we will move over here. So, as I said earlier, you don't actually want to touch the light bulb itself, so I'm going to use these awesome gloves I have. Once we have our gloves on, we're going to safely touch our glass bulb as to not harm the rigidity. Now up here, I'm going to firmly grasp this socket right here, I'm going to put my end cap in there and turn clockwise, righty-tighty if you will, and just firmly 
Put that in there, not too tight though, you don't want to manhandle the light bulb. Once it's in there, we're going to test and see if it works. Nice. All right, there we go. It is firmly in there. Let's check and see then. Now we've got it in there. All right. Sometimes you just gotta do it twice. So, if you've been paying attention this whole time, you will have learned the origin of the screw and light bulb joke, just a little bit about how a light bulb is actually comprised and what it's made out of, and how to properly install it for your own convenient use. Thanks for coming, you guys. Thank you, Derek. You're an inspiration to us all. <laughs>